There was incredible human activity happening on this continent at the same time as we think about the beginning of Western civilization. This is like we live with ancient Rome around us. The Hopewell Ceremonial Earthworks are a remarkable series of eight sites that together tell a common story. The Great Circle, the Octagon Earthworks, Earthworks at Hopewell Culture National Historical Park like Hopeton and High Bank Works are geometric earthworks. That's one of the kinds of architecture that the Hopewell used for their ceremonial places. In addition, there were hilltop enclosures, and that's represented at the Fort Ancient Earthworks, and to a lesser extent, the Hopewell Mound Group. Finally, there are sites like Sipe Earthworks, which is a tripartite earthwork, a large circle, a small circle, and a square. And there's actually four or five of those that the Hopewell built. This is the only surviving remnant, so it, it shows that aspect of the architecture. This culture came together right here, you know, where we live in our backyard in some cases, and built monumental pieces of architecture that also encoded uh, into the landscape the cycles of the moon and the sun. And it wasn't being done under like one empire. Almost everywhere else in the world where you have monumental architecture on this scale, it was built by people that lived in a big city that were ruled over by a king or a queen. And the king would tell people to go build me a pyramid or go build me a temple. These people did not live in a city. They did not have kings or queens. To have this egalitarian society with no social hierarchy, no king, no nobles, it took all of them to do it. So literally all of the tribes in the Eastern Woodlands and even beyond, given what we know about the extent of what's called the Hopewell interaction sphere, People came here from the ends of the world to be a part of this, to help construct the walls and to participate in the ceremonies that took place within them. These mounds that maybe we've been used to having in our backyard are really an incredible piece of the human story and trying to give people you know, more understanding of that, that pride and, and that, that can change the way that we talk about them and maybe also the way we you know, save and care about what we have left. There are really a lot of reasons to go after World Heritage Inscription. Primarily, it was to bring global attention to these amazing Native American sites that we have in Ohio. Many people, they may not know the term World Heritage, but they are familiar with Great Wall of China. They are familiar with, with the pyramids of Egypt. They are familiar with Mount Uluru or Ayers Rock in Australia. They are famous because they are World Heritage Sites. Only 24 of those were in the United States. So we make the 25th, the first for Ohio. One way we were able to really show the UNESCO committee how valuable these sites are is how well the sites are maintained. Since 1923, the National Park Service has been working with and collaborating with the Ohio History Connection. So ourselves and the National Park Service, as well as our coalition of volunteer partners around the state and tribal partners, were the main driving force of getting inscription, but also now working together to really help the world understand these sites very privileged to be one of the team that went to Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, to the World Heritage Convention, to be able to be there and see it happen live. It was a little surreal because I was in the Middle East, but I was also in this global gathering of people who cared about heritage. And then the moment happened, they were talking about our nomination. So up on this giant screen with people from around the world, there were maps of Licking County and Warren County and Ross County, you know, that they were talking about our corner of the world in this global stage. And then the gavel came down and the U.S. ambassador to Saudi Arabia spoke briefly and gave the microphone to Chief Wallace. And it just like the emotion of it overtook me. Now, I'd like to turn the floor over to a representative of the people to whom this means the most, the Native Americans who are descended from the builders of the earthworks. Chief Glenna Wallace of the Eastern Shawnee Tribe of Oklahoma, please take the floor. Today, 
eight remarkable earthworks in Ohio built by our Native American ancestors some 2,000 years ago have now been officially designated a World Heritage Site. After nearly 20 years working towards this gold, my immediate reaction is to shout and to shout with joy. My exhilaration is coupled with reflection as I am so humbled, so honored, and so thankful that the world at long last recognizes the commitment, the spirituality, the knowledge of astronomy, mathematics, art, geology, and aesthetic vision resulting in the imaginative thinking used by our ancestors to create these magnificent earthworks. I am so thankful for the many, many individuals and organizations that helped make this inscription a reality. We are honored and immensely blessed. Thank you. The story here is of these magnificent indigenous achievements by the ancestors of ancient American Indians. And, and that's important not only to appreciate those accomplishments of those people 2,000 years ago, but also recognizing that the descendants of those people have this rich heritage, just like everybody else has that rich heritage to look back on in wherever countries they're from and the world heritage sites that, that they look up to. As a frontline park ranger, the first impact I'm seeing is people are just curious and they want to come out to see these newly inscribed World Heritage Sites. People should know whenever they're coming to these sites that you're coming to sacred land. You're coming to places that people before us put their elders to rest. We want you to explore these sites, but we also want you to do that respectfully. Take some time to absorb this in your way. That's the best way for these sites to continue to be preserved, is if people come and learn about them and then share them with someone else. As Native Americans, we are environmentalists. We are naturalists. Uh, we have uh, an affinity, a love, a respect uh, for all of nature. Uh, and so we talk about those mounds. They're not just made out of anything. They're made out of Mother Earth. And there's a difference between Mother Earth and dirt. Dirt's what you have under your fingernails and that you try to clean and throw away. But Mother Earth, you want to preserve. Mother Earth, we need to protect. I really see Ohioans hungry to better understand Native history. You know, many of us went to school, learned about removal, and then there's just like a lot of question marks. It's an incredible story how tribes are saving their languages, are reclaiming history. And so being at that point in the timeline and being a help to that however we can is really some of the best work that, that we get to do. I am just so proud of Ohio and the progress that has been made. So much of that is going on now. And, and that, that to me is what World Heritage has done for all of us. This is just the beginning. You know, this is just gonna continue to grow and grow. And, and we're just really excited that history and the story of culture and people is being used as a building block for many other programs in the state. Ohio, you have a treasure there, so keep it as a treasure. <laughs>